Today in the studio, I'll show you how to add a dash of JavaScript to your Rails app. Hey folks, Mike Clark here with the Pragmatic Studio. And today we're gonna to spice up our Rails app with a few dashes of JavaScript. We'll add some effects with jQuery and also send an Ajax request. Now, if you're already comfortable with Rails, but you're new to JavaScript, well, this is what your appetite for what's possible. If you already know JavaScript and jQuery, this will show you how to start working with it in Rails. This is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Our application lets users list items for sale. Now that spring's finally here, it's time to clean out that garage. For example, here's a fun looking unicycle that's in pretty good condition. And we just see that we've got the unicycle's description and it looks like three folks left a comment for us down below here. And then we have a form below that for submitting a new comment. Now this is a pretty good start, but we actually don't wanna show all these comments by default when we load the page. Instead, we wanna hide the comments. And then if you click on this comment link, we wanna to toggle all the comments and the comment form on and off. And we can do all that dynamically with JavaScript. So let's start by looking at the structure of this page over in the Rails template. Okay, so I'm in the app views directory, the items subdirectory, and we've got the show.html.erb. And here's our template right here. Here's that link for the comments, and currently it doesn't go anywhere. And then we've got a section down below it called the comment section. So section ID, comment section there. And then we've got an ordered list with the ID of comments. And inside that, you notice we rendered this collection of comments, which is in the at comments instance variable. And by convention, what Rails is gonna do here is for every object that's in that collection, because it's a comment object, it's gonna look for a partial to render. And we have that partial up in app views comments underscore comment.html.erb. It's gonna call that partial for every object in the collection. So if we look in that, we notice it's just one line item. And then inside of this template, we can use the comment local variable, which will have the next comment that's in that collection. So you can think of this as just looping through the collection and rendering that partial for each object in the collection. And then down below that, we have our comment form. And the form posts to the create action of the comments controller. If any of this is unfamiliar, you might wanna check out our Rails level one online course. We go over all this stuff and a whole bunch more. So when doing any sort of JavaScript, it really helps to start with a good structure where you've got things like sections and IDs and then things partitioned out into different partials like this. So we've got a good start here. So our first task is just to hide this comment area, this entire section. And we can do that with some CSS. We don't need any JavaScript to do this. I'm gonna go over to uh, the assets directory inside of style sheets. I've got a bunch of style sheets in here. One of them specific to comments, comments.scss. I'm just gonna add a CSS rule here. It's gonna be a rule for the HTML element that has the ID comments-section. That's the ID that was in the template. And we'll set its display to none. That's how we hide that. Then if we reload our page, well, the comments disappear. That's exactly what we want. So our next task is we need to show the comments when we click on this comments link. So let's go have a look at that link again. So here's the link back over in the show template. And by default, Rails uses a technique called unobtrusive JavaScript to attach JavaScript to elements inside of the DOM. That's the structure of the HTML page. And to make that work, we need some way to identify this link in the DOM. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add an ID to this link. The ID is gonna be called comments-link. Now it's time to write some JavaScript. And our JavaScript goes up in the app assets JavaScripts directory. We have one file in there right now, application.js. This is a manifest file that basically lists all the JavaScript that we want inside of our Rails application. And you notice by default, it's requiring the jQuery library as well as the jQuery UJS, that's unobtrusive JavaScript. We've got the TurboLinks library. And also you notice this directory that says require underscore tree dot, where dot is the current directory. So it's gonna look for any JavaScript files that are in this directory and go ahead and include them in the manifest. So all the files in the directory will then get packaged up in a single file and it'll be minified and compressed in production, which means that it'll get downloaded on the first page load and then it'll be cached every time after that. So any files we put in here will ultimately get loaded into our browser. So we're gonna create a new file in here. 
and I'm gonna call it comments because I'm working on comment stuff. Normally you might give this a JS extension. If you wanna write straight JavaScript, that's the way to go. But Rails actually prefers CoffeeScript, which is just a lightweight language, a more elegant way to write JavaScript that compiles down into JavaScript code. And I much prefer it over writing just straight JavaScript. So we're gonna give it the .coffee extension. So the first thing we need to do here is make sure that the document is fully loaded before running any JavaScript. We have to wait for all the elements on the page to be there before we can do anything with them. To do that, we're gonna use some jQuery. And the jQuery method that you're probably gonna use most often is this dollar method, and it takes some parameters. You can think of this like a Swiss army knife for hacking through the DOM. It always returns a jQuery object based on the parameters that we give it. In this particular case, we're gonna give it the document so we said, we want the document expressed as a jQuery object, and then we can call methods on that jQuery object. I'm gonna call the on method. The on method here takes two parameters. The first parameter is the event that we wanna listen for. We're gonna listen for the event page colon change. And the second parameter is a function we wanna run when that event is triggered. And the way we do functions in CoffeeScript is just this dash arrow like that. And we'll define the function body in a minute. Now this is slightly different than the standard way in jQuery to wait for the document to be ready. This page change event is a little bit different than that. The reason we're using that here is Rails plays some tricks to speed up page rendering when links are clicked inside of our app. It does that using turbo links. So this is the recommended way to wait for the page to be ready. It'll get fired when the page is fully loaded and it's also fired when Rails loads pages behind the scenes using turbo links. So this is the way to go. Okay, so when the page is ready, we need to attach an event handler to be run when the element with the ID comments link is clicked. So the first thing we need to do is just find that link inside of the DOM. We're gonna use the dollar method again to do that. This time we're gonna give it a CSS selector as a string. The selector we're interested in is comments-link. The ID is comments-link like that. If this was a class, we would use dot, but we set it up as an ID inside of that template, so it's comments link. That's gonna find that inside of the DOM and then return it as a jQuery object. We can then call a method on that jQuery object, the click method, because we're interested in click events. The click method doesn't take two parameters. Notice the comma we have up here before the arrow. So we just give it an arrow. All it wants is a function. Now it's important to point out that white space is significant in CoffeeScript. So when we go to define this function, we need to indent this another two spaces because we're giving statements that we want to have run when this click event happens. In this particular case, we're just gonna put up an alert that says clicked, right? So for white space, notice we were indented two spaces there, that's part of this function, and we're indented two spaces up here, that's part of that on methods function definition. So CoffeeScript looks at the indentation to figure out which statements go with which functions. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. Okay, let's try this out. Back over in the browser, if we click on comments now, well, we get an alert box saying that it was clicked. So now we know that we have everything hooked up. Okay, so now we want to actually toggle this comment section. We would need that comment section to show up when we click on this link. So back over here in our CoffeeScript file, instead of doing an alert, what we want to do is find that comment section. We're gonna use the dollar function to do that. It's called comments section. That's the ID we gave to that section in the template. And here we can call the toggle method. Now there's also a show and a hide method, but again, we wanna to toggle this on and off and jQuery conveniently provides a toggle method to do that. And all that does is toggle the visibility of the element, in this case, it's the comment section element, by changing the CSS display property for us. Now back over on the page, if I click on the comments here, oh, you notice we've got our three comments back with our comment form at the bottom. If I click it again, the whole comment section goes away. So that's exactly what we want. Now, if we want to get a little bit fancy, we might want to sort of fade these in. You notice that it's a little bit abrupt when it kind of pops that in there like that. So let's go back over here. We can actually use the function fade toggle. jQuery has a lot of really nice effect methods built into it. With that one, now if we click on comments, you notice it kind of fades into view here. And when we uncheck it, well, it fades back out again. So that just gives it a little bit more visual appeal. Now, one more thing we might wanna do here is it'd be polite to put the cursor in this text box right here as soon as the comments are shown. That way we're ready to type our first comment. And that's pretty easy to do. Back over in our CoffeeScript file, we're just gonna add another statement to this click handler function. 
And in this case, what we want to do is go find that text area. Well, by convention, Rails assigns an ID to the text area based on the model name and the attribute name that that text area is for. And in this case, the model name is comment and the attribute is called body. So it's comment underscore body in this case. That's just the Rails convention. And then we can call the focus method on that. So when our link is clicked, we're going to fade toggle and also set a focus in that text area. Back over here, if we hit our comments, we go down to the bottom, notice that the cursor is already blinking in the text area and we're ready to write our first comment. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the comment. Where are the handlebars? I'm going to hit post comment. You notice we got a full page reload and the comment section closed back up again because, well, we've got that display property set to none. So it closed up the comments when we, this page was reloaded. So this is typically what happens when we post a form. It's a synchronous request. The request goes down to the server. In this case, the server is creating a new comment. Then it's redirecting back to the browser to tell it to show the items show page. And then the browser issues a new request and we have a full page reload. But what we really want to do here is issue a request asynchronously, a so-called Ajax request. We're going to use JavaScript inside of the browser to send that request down to the server. The server is going to create the comment just like it normally would, but instead of sending back a redirect or issuing a redirect, it's actually going to generate some JavaScript that will append the comment to our existing comment list. And it's going to send that JavaScript back down to the browser. The browser is going to evaluate that JavaScript, which will update or modify the DOM to put that new comment on the list. So we'll have an asynchronous request happening behind the scenes and then dynamically updating the page when the request is done. So let's give that a shot. So the first thing we need to do back over in our show template is set up this form to submit this request Ajaxified or asynchronously. And the way we can do that is use an option on Form 4 called Remote and we're just going to set it to True. And this tells Rails to send the post request asynchronously and expect a JavaScript response. We're using the option on the Form 4 helper, but this option is also available on the Link To and the Button To helpers. So now that we have this Ajaxified form, the next step is to implement the functionality on the server to respond to the request appropriately. We do that by going over into our controllers directory. This is the comments controller that's creating the comment, and that's where this form is posting. And we've got a create action right here. And right now we're just redirecting to that item. So we're handling an HTML response by doing that sort of redirect. But we don't want to do a redirect when the form is asking for JavaScript back. This only works for the standard HTML way of doing things. So to respond to a JavaScript request, we're going to add what's called a respond to block. So method in Rails, respond underscore to. It takes a block, and by convention, the block parameter is usually called format. I'm just going to stick that right in there and then end like that. And this respond to block lets us respond to whatever the client wants. So in the case of HTML, we'll take format.html, then what we want to do is this redirect. So we use another block here. We say, all right, if the client wants HTML, then run this block of code, which is going to do the redirect. In our case, we want some JavaScript back. So if the format is JavaScript, format.js, then we want to respond differently. But instead of giving it a block here, we're just going to let the action go ahead and fall through and do the default rendering that's built into Rails. And that means this is going to render a file in the comments directory, and the file is going to be called create, which is the same name as the action, js.erb. So let's go ahead and go create that file. It's in our app views. It's going to be in the comments subdirectory. It's called create. Now, normally this would be create.html.erb. We're going to use the ERB templating system to generate HTML. But in this case, we're going to use the ERB templating system to generate JavaScript. So it's create.js.erb. And in this file, we need to generate JavaScript code that's going to append some HTML to the end of our list of comments. So we're going to start with our jQuery function dollar. We're going to get our comments ordered list. Remember, it has the ID of comments. And then we're going to call the append method on that. And what do we want to append? Well, we want to append some HTML right here. What HTML should it be? Well, we want to append the snippet of HTML that shows the new comment. That's the comment that just got created. And that comment is stored in the at comment instance variable. But we need to render that somehow. We need a list item that shows that comment. So how are we going to do that? Well, conveniently, we already have a template 
that renders the HTML for a comment. It's over here in our comments, app views, comments subdirectory. It's underscore comment.html.erb. This is the partial that renders one comment. Remember, we use this partial when we're showing all the comments over here in our items. We have this render at comments. And I said, by convention, Rails is going to call the partial underscore comment for every object that's in that collection. And inside of that partial, we just generate one line item. Well, that's exactly what we want to do here. We just want to render this one comment. So because we're in an ERB template here, generating JavaScript, we can use standard ERB syntax, less than percent equals render at comment. By convention, Rails will look for that, com that comment partial we just looked at to render the comment. This is JavaScript we're rendering. We need to put it inside of quotes. That's what the append method wants. And also we need to escape whatever rendered HTML comes back so we get valid JavaScript. We can do that very easily using the J method there. Now this is a standard JavaScript file. We're generating JavaScript, not CoffeeScript. So we need a semicolon at the end of this line. So I saved everything off. Now back over in the browser, I need to reload because we changed that form for helper, remember? Click on comments. There's our comments. We've got our field down below. I'm just gonna add a new comment here. Did you lose the other wheel? Post the comment and look at that. It just gets appended to the list. We don't have a full reload of the page at all. So we've got our Ajaxified form posting back to our server asynchronous request. And then we've got this dynamic update happening inside of the page, which is pretty cool. Now, one small problem you notice though, is we're left with the last comment in that text area box. It would be really nice to just clear that out when we post a new comment. And that's easy to fix. Back over here where we're generating some JavaScript, I just need to get a hold of that text area. We'll use our dollar function to do that again. And this is called comment body. That's the Rails convention of that ID. And then we have a val function. That's the value that's inside of that element. And we're just going to set it to an empty string. Now we'll post a new comment. Someone stole half your bike. Go ahead and post it. There's the comment, it gets appended to the list and our text area field is now blank. So just stepping back for a minute, we're using ERB to generate JavaScript on the server that then gets run inside of the browser. That's really powerful. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more problem we need to fix. And to demonstrate the problem, I'm gonna go over to a different item here, our classified listing. Over to this bamboo fly rod, it's got a really long description here. If you go down here, it's got a comment link. If you click on the comment, notice it pops us way back up to the top of the page. We see the form got put in down here, but every time we click on this thing, we get popped up to the top of the page there. And that's kind of annoying. Now, the reason that's happening is because of the way that this link to here works. Even though we have a click handler that's set up that runs JavaScript when this link is clicked, the link also does what all links do when we click it. It wants to follow whatever the href is in the link. In this particular case, we've got it set up with just this hash sign. Now that's just a blank anchor and it refers to the current page. So the default behavior when we click on a link is gonna be to scroll to the top of that current page. It's a fairly easy fix. All we need to do is prevent the default link behavior from happening. And that's gonna happen back in the original file we created at the very beginning of this, this comments.coffee. Now this doesn't involve any Ajax. This is just some JavaScript we wrote to dynamically change the page. And remember we have this click handler set up on the comments link. Well, the click handler will actually give us the event that triggered that. This is a parameter to this function here. And the way CoffeeScript works is the parameter comes before the actual arrow, which is a little bit difficult to get used to, but just something to keep in mind. So this is a parameter to the function down here. And inside of the function, we can take that event and call prevent default on it. And that's a function. And this simply tells the event object to prevent the browser's default action. Back over from our browser now, if we go to bamboo fly rod and we click on comments, well, you notice it didn't jump back up to the top of the page. It just stayed right there. So it's a pretty easy fix. It's pretty amazing what you can do with a few lines of JavaScript and the Rails conventions. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but I hope it helps you get started. Have fun with it and feel free to leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.